Thanks for tuning in to the Vintage Cinema Review. On this week's episode, we're covering from 1977, Slapshot. By far and away, my personal favorite sports movie of all time. It was a very good sports movie. Uh, actually, there's a lot of NHL talent in this. They're saying it's from Charlestown, but I believe it's from Johnstown, PA. I don't care whose town it's from. This is a great goddamn movie. You've got 70s excellence. You've got amazing clothes, amazing attitudes, and amazing hockey. Yeah, we were lucky enough to sit down with Jeff Carlson, who uh, portrayed one of the Hanson brothers in this movie, and also had a, a interview with uh, Christian Hanson, whose dad Dave was in the movie. So you're going to hear those interviews uh, before we get into the vintage cinema review. So hang on for that. That's right. First hand knowledge from people who've actually been there. Yep. Yeah. So we hope you guys enjoy that. Speaking of which, if you're enjoying the show, leave that five star rating, Spotify, Apple, Google, wherever you may be. And sit back, relax, and enjoy these two interviews, and then enjoy the Venice Cinema Review of Slapshot. Hey, this is Dave. Hi, Matt. Dave. How's it going? Good. Yeah, we're here at uh, the Pucks with Pros a charity event for breast cancer, sitting with a really special guest, uh, Mr. Jeff Carlson. How's it going? Uh, not bad. Great Good. to be here. Yeah, we're uh, privileged and honored to have you here. Yeah, he's here uh, sponsoring, well, helping with Juice, an old friend of ours, an old friend of the basement, just coming down, doing the Pucks for Pros events, and uh, I think having a good time. Oh, automatic. You know, I get to see all my great friends, ex-hockey players, and again, it's a great charity, breast cancer, and we've done a lot with for breast cancer, and I'm proud to be part of it. Awesome, awesome. Yeah, hopefully you're listening to this, you're aware Jeff was in Slapshot, very, very famous movie. Uh, just watched it again this morning, and it's iconic, iconic yeah. movie. You got to get a life. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, it is. It's great. Yeah. And it's uh, it's crazy. I'm sitting here with you. I just watched it this morning. And uh, so tell us a little bit about that. Like, how was the filming of it? And all the, like, what are some memories from it? No, there's so many memories. I could sit here for days. But uh, they turned around, and the movie's actually a true movie. When we played in Johnstown, Pennsylvania, <laughs> and we, a losing team, we ended up winning uh, the Lockhart Cup back then. And uh, they came out, and they... Uh, Ned Dowd's sister turned around and wanted to uh, uh, write, write about minor league hockey, and they turned around and want, they got the cast together, but they couldn't find, out of uh, L.A., three guys to play the Hanson brothers, uh, as in the movie. Mm -hmm. Right. Originally, the Carlson brothers. Right. But uh, we finished up our season, and they turned around and asked if we'd try it out, and we went out there, and uh, George, Hill, George Hill, the producer, says... All right, let's shoot. And we went out there and we're reading our lines, basically, memorize our lines out of the script. And he says, cut. No, no, no. Guys, just do ab lib. And from then on, it was just everything off the damn wall. That's all we did. Just, just being yourself. Just being ourselves. Being, being. So is that the part with, like, the uh, the cars? Like, when, like, <laughs> Pony the was like, they just got some damn cars <laughs> yeah. in their bag. And, that, and that, it's all true. I mean, we, had, we, we used to put our race cars together. We had days off, four or five days. Myself, Guido Tunisi, my brother Jack, uh, brother Steve, and uh, Dave Hansen. We put all our cars together. We get a few cases of beer. Everybody bring little cars over. We bet and drink beer and play race cars. That's awesome. You know, that it, 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 it says, a lot of that <laughs> movie is true. It's just blown out of portion. Have fun with. But that's how she got the script by watching our crazy just, yeah, antics. Just, yeah, watching you guys do do your thing. That's yeah, really cool. Yeah, it's, it was pretty good. That's and a I, great fact, like, about is. the movie. It is, yeah. and that was the Johnstown Jets, is that right? Yes. Is that the name yep. of the team? Right. That's, that's cool. So Johnstown, that's out near Pittsburgh. That's Is that about right, out on the way between here and Pittsburgh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And another thing, too, I guess, uh, hockey in the, what, late 60s? Did you play early 70s? Mm -mm. That's my age, yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah, we uh, end up winning, uh, doing the movie in 77. Mm -hmm. So I, I started off a little puppy. I'm from northern Minnesota. Okay. Yeah, I saw that here, Virginia, yeah. Minnesota. Virginia, Minnesota. I, yep. didn't, I wasn't aware there was a Virginia, Minnesota. That's yep. crazy. Yep. Yeah, that's up by uh, Duluth, uh, 45 miles north of Duluth, Minnesota. And uh, that's where men are men and so the women. I'm only kidding. Oh, oh look at that. <laughs> yeah, I know. But, uh, of, of course, we get cold winters up to, like, Winnipeg, yeah. you know, 35, 40 below. And we started skating on the outside. And basically. Uh, uh, get on the ponds and uh, walk out to the ponds and there'd be cow dung out there frozen we use those for hockey pucks out there oh wow see we yeah. used to do that here back before global warming we yeah. did have our actual ponds were frozen back yeah. in the uh, <laughs> exactly. early 80s and, you betcha. and, and, and now, now it's just a pond year round it's like exactly. 40 degrees in the winter yeah. Yeah. but um, yeah my question was like it was cool to see 
like people think of hockey now like this glamorous i like you guys were like taking buses everywhere yep. 17 20 hours sometimes traveling overnight right. day and night trying to get places but i guess there wasn't really anything to do on the buses except like play cards and and drink drink and sleep and uh if you had a hangover you get some a lot of sleep but you know our bus was pretty decent we had bunks in it oh cool. nice you know but uh, yeah it was uh, we'd go to the from johnstown all the way up to Bose uh, in maine and make it a whole two-week trip and uh on that old iron lung, and I'll tell you what, uh, there was a lot of antics on that bus that uh, <laughs> uh-huh. I, I, I really can't say. But uh, oh, yeah. you don't have you know, to. We uh, can use our imagination. Exactly. Yeah, we can figure it out. Yep. So, um, so that's pretty accurate then, the party and drinking on the buses and all that as depicted. How about, like, the groupies and stuff following it around? The uh, there, there used to be a car group, but now they're hockey chicks. They're, hockey they're, chicks. Yeah, they're different. Oh, uh, nice. Uh, yeah, you get a you know, closer games. You would get your uh, booster clubs coming to the games and stuff like that. And we'd go to uh, like Philadelphia or something like that. And they, we, we'd, we'd go in there and kick their butts right. you know, back in those days. And they'd be outside throwing stuff at the bus. And uh, in, the, in the movie, my buddy, uh, I won't mention his name, but we used to stick our buns out of the, out the window <laughs> like in the so movie. So that was so in the movie, yeah, oh, when they all came into yeah, the yeah, town. Yeah, yeah, yeah mooning them like, and stuff. But see, that's just that's just fun. It's yeah, just I mean, like having fun that with, is, with you what know, you're doing. Back in those days, it, it was so much looser, you know. Oh, definitely. Uh, I mean, nowadays, you got to be careful of everything. Oh, nowadays. everything, you know. Yeah, you can't you can't be yourself. Now, if, can't. There's, if there's any woke people out there, they're not going to like what we're saying here. <laughs> no, well, we deal with it all the time. We do vintage cinema reviews, so we review old movies. Like we just did Revenge of the Nerds from like yeah, 1984. Yeah. They could never make that movie today. No. People would, you know, people would be, oh, you can't put that out, you know, this right. and that. And, See, uh, in the movie Slapshot, they wanted to put an X on it back in those days, but they got it to go to R. Yes. Because. I, well, with the X for. X rated. Yeah, but for, for what was in the boobs or. A lot of boobs and. Language. Stuff. A lot of language. Yeah, but, language. like, I mean, that's everybody, like, like fuck this, fuck that. I don't yeah, know. but Suzanne sucks. Uh, da, 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 yeah, no, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean. You can't already say shit on the, in the movie in any anymore. Anymore, yeah. You know, it's just well, I don't know if this is true or not, but it said that there, it had an advertisement that had an additional warning saying certain language may be too strong for children, along with the R rating. Oh, Basically, okay. during the advertisement yeah. to try to warn people. Right. For '77, it was strong language. It's very strong. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's crazy. You go to these big hockey tournaments, or go to Chicago or Minnesota. <laughs> these little puppy kids are on that bus. They're eight, nine hours going to these tournaments. Right. Uh, and I was coach, what did you guys do on the bus? So they, they watch Slap Shot five, six, seven oh, times. Yeah. You know, so, yeah, yeah that's you know. a, it, it's definitely a movie. I think if, if you're in the hockey, you grew up with it. You watched yeah, it. You the, know what I mean? The longevity has been fantastic for it. I, and I'm, I'm proud to be part of it. And, uh, uh, you know, like, it just it's amazing. And I'm, I'm just happy to be out there and I'll sign autographs and greet people, take photos. And I, I think it's fantastic. It's definitely cool. And that uh, that did do Slapshot 2 and 3 also. Yes, the yeah. second one was uh, with uh, Gary Busey and Stephen Baldwin. Mm-hmm. And the third one was the Junior League. Uh, with a, uh, I can't remember the other guys. Okay. Name, no, but, yeah. The Junior League, the kids can watch. Mm-hmm. All right, all right. You guys ever seen that? But that, that's a clean one. The second one, it's kind of like the Mighty Ducks. Yeah, yeah. Ex- but, yeah. exactly. But, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. I got you. I got you. So is this true that they said, like, you and your two brothers told, uh, they asked you about Paul Newman, if you told him to skate, and you said, no, we told him how to act? Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, <laughs> and, that's and, pretty cool. And he never went to ask until he worked with us. That's right. <laughs> yeah, that's all it took. You know what Paul, I mean? Paul Newman had to have a stunt double in that, correct? Like, yeah, there, there had to have been a couple. Well, one, one scene, I think, uh, he was in skating around the net, shooting the puck. But otherwise, he wanted to do all his own. <laughs> that's the way he wanted it. And that's the way it should have been. And, and was Paul Newman, I think, was uh, 89 years old when, when they filmed, <laughs> I don't think he was when they filmed Slapshot, correct? 89? 89. That's, I don't know. I, I, no, no, he was 50 something. He's being sarcastic. Oh, yeah. It's not like him. One, one, one thing I know he definitely was that topless scene. I know he was definitely in on that. Oh, yeah, he, I would yeah, not he, want to stump up he, on he that didn't one. He didn't need anybody. Yeah. Suzanne? Uh, yeah. Yeah, we yeah. just found out today she was the mom in yes. um, a Christmas Story. That's right. Yeah. yeah. And I was exactly. like, I see the mom in Christmas Story's boobs. Yeah. That was wild. I did not. I look, We looked it up then. I'm like, who was that? Like, you know what I mean? And found out. And there were Close Encounters, too. She was in. Yes, exactly. Mm-hmm. Yep. So I, I read, uh, and I don't know if this is true, that Al Pacino maybe wanted to be in this movie. There was quite a few guys, yeah. yeah. Nick, no- Nick Nolte. Uh, uh, Nick Nolte, yeah. 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 Uh, the problem was uh, those guys couldn't skate. Is that what it was? Yeah. Okay. See, Newman did skate 
uh, half uh, pretty decent okay. Okay. when he was okay. younger. I think he was a puppy, a younger guy. Mm -hmm. So these guys couldn't skate, so that, you know they wanted a minute. So you can't put anybody in that can't skate. Can't skate, right? You know, so it's, it's like Stephen Baldwin was in it. I mean, Stephen Baldwin could skate, but it looks like he's skinny. He's, skinny, he's got diaper rash. Oh yeah. You know, <laughs> <laughs> you know just I mean, he, he did a good part. Of Wait, it. is Baldwin's Ball right. Canadian? Any? Or no, no, I think they're from New York. New York. I yeah, know. York they, I know they play a lot of hockey. I think. Yeah, they they yeah. played. Yeah. They, yeah, he can play. Like they play in a lot of the celebrity tournaments. Right. Things like that. Right. Well, according to Paul Newman, this is according to the internet. Who knows? But he stated this is his favorite film that he ever starred in. He, he loved it the I most. I don't think it was a favorite. I think it's the most fun he ever. Most played. fun is yeah, that what it was? I, I okay. Think I'd go that route because I mean you can't beat Butch Cass and his yes. dance kid. Oh yeah. yeah. True. True. You know, and uh, a few of those other good ones. Yeah. So I don't know if you guys, I mean, he's aware, I'm sure he was in the movie, but this is a fact from the internet. At the end, during the parade scene, there's a marquee with, uh, yeah. with Deep Throat uh, on oh, the marquee. The, 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 19, the 1972 cloud. Yeah, yeah. And I think a, the other one was Meatballs. Meatballs. Meatballs and Deep Throat. With Bill Murray. Yeah. 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 So Deep Throat, that, it was like, uh, that was X-rated though, right? That oh, was like yeah. a porno yeah. movie. Yeah. yeah. A lot so of people don't know that. Yeah. Here's another one. Remember back in the old days when they turned around, they used to have uh, Pet Rocks? Yeah. You know, that yeah, was a fat have a pet rock. Right? Yeah. Now, yeah. if you watch the movie and we're in the locker room, look behind my head, and mm -hmm. right behind my head, it says pet brick. Oh, we're, really? We're, we're going to shoot a scene that day, and I had a shoelace in my pocket. Uh -huh. I was, we crossed it over this bridge. I saw this rock with the six little holes in it. So I turned around and took out of my uh, uh, white piece of chalk. Mm -hmm. I put it through the inside of the loops there, and I dragged it behind me. So oh. I got in the locker room. They said, what do you got there? I said, it's my pet brick. I my said, pet watch. I went make him roll over. So I wrapped it around the brick, and I'd pull on it. He said, look at him roll over. And I said, watch him sit up. I'd, I'd pull him up and watch him sit up. And, but if you ever watch that scene, it's right behind my back of my head, pet brick. I'm going to go look for it okay. when I get home. Okay. You should have took that out on the ice and, like, beat somebody. With it. You know, no, I, I, I had these you, things you had to the beat brick <laughs> Yeah, you guys were kicking ass in that movie. So yeah. we got our, our third co-host, Zap. He couldn't be here. Uh, he loves this movie, and he's going to be so jealous. We got to sit yeah. here with you. We have our buddy Nutley Nick here. He's a fan of the show, comes on from time to time. So he's a big hockey fan. You got any questions for well, Why'd you call him Lovely Nick? Uh, uh, explain uh, that one to uh, me, it's, buddy. It's, it's, oh, I didn't hear. It's, it's uh, Nutley Nick. Oh, Nutley. Oh, Nutley. Oh, no, Nutley. I, I, Ugly, ugly Nick. Ugly ugly Nick. Nick. Oh. <laughs> We're only serious, Nick. Yeah. I thought you said lovely too at first. Lovely. I was like, I, I thought that was it. nutly. Yeah, it's no, not. No. Oh, it's lovely nutly. Nick. Lovely, lovely nutly. Nick. That's that's your new. That's good. That's good. I like that. That's what my wife will call me. Oh, nice, nice. Is that before or after sex? <laughs> How about it? Pre-cigarette, post-cigarette. Yeah, right. Do you smoke after sex? It, no. You no. ever look? <laughs> <laughs> That's what I do after sex. There you go. There you go. Well, I, which, which one are you chewing on? <laughs> <laughs> there, there's a can of uh, snuff yeah. next next to Nutley. That, that's the uh, joke. Nutley likes his snuff. Uh, Nutley, you got a question for him? No. Oh, Nothing? Yeah. Come on. You yeah, got to think of something. <laughs> hey, we got them all flat. We got them all flat. Got, on. I got trivia for you. See if you can figure this. Maybe you know this already. There was one other sports film filmed in Johnstown, PA. Do you know what it was? Uh, off the top of my head, no. Oh, I, I got it. I got it. Go ahead. All the right moves. All the right moves with Tom oh. Cruise. Are you aware of that movie? Yeah, I know. The yeah, football yeah, movie. Yeah. Yeah, 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 that was filmed. I, I didn't know that. Yes, that oh. was in Johnstown. Sorry. What was the question? What other movie was filmed in Johnstown? Sports movie was filmed in Johnstown, Pennsylvania. All the right moves, yep. yeah. I didn't Tom Cruise. Yep, there you go. No, no they didn't know that. How long ago was that? That was 83, I think, around that. That would have been after there. that. So jo Johnstown is like a big steel town and right. stuff like that and all right. that. So you were living out there, I guess, like right. during the filming and all that well, stuff. Well, we got called. We were playing for the Minnesota Fighting Saints. Mm -hmm. Myself, my brother Jack, my brother Steve, Dave Anson. And we all got sent down there during the... Uh, to, to the minor leagues, mm -hmm. and after the season, they pulled uh, uh, Jack up to play for the Fighting Saints, and we end up staying there. Mm -hmm. And uh, they're starting to call us up, so I'm still waiting till this day. Still, yeah, I'm seeing stuff. And, you know, right, your scouts and, here today. I think yep, you yeah. yeah, we had our own apartments there and the whole bit, and uh, lived right there and played our hockey there. Yeah, how was that town like? Like living well, there? The town was good. You know, it, it's a steel town. You know, it's uh, it was a good town. A lot of great people there. A lot yep. of great people. You know, it's. Uh, it's an older town, you know. They had the big flood there and the whole mm -hmm. bit. You know, the dog saved Johnstown. You know that. Oh, the really? Movie. Well, they called yeah. it Flood Town, in the, in the movie, didn't they yeah. say something? Flood there was there flood, a joke, Flood. Flood Town, because they've, flood had, town. The, they've mm -hmm. had those dams all break up in that area. Oh, and okay. They come down, uh, what, 25, 30 feet, and just go right on downtown because it's down in a, 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 a like valley. a valley or something. Yeah, okay. Yeah. That's what how it was. Uh, we we live 
not too far Hershey to a steel town yeah. in uh, Steelton, Pennsylvania. Okay, mm-hmm. but there was there was also a huge flood in what seventy two. Yeah, Agnes, I think it was seventy two. Yeah, yeah. Hurricane Agnes came through and, and flooded all of all of Harrisburg. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it was bad. So that's, that's it. Pennsylvania don't have much. I mean, we don't have the hurricanes and stuff no, like that. No. We, we got the floods, right? Yeah. And, right. That, and that's sporadically. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. which is great. Right. So um, oh, go, go ahead. ahead. No, go ahead. No, I had a. Go, 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 go ahead. <laughs> go, go dead. Go dead. Go, go dead. A <laughs> uh, question about the glasses. Now, yeah. now they couldn't have been prescription. No, they were just clear, clear glasses. Clear glass. Okay. When myself, my brother Jack, and Steve played back when we were young pups, my mom and dad, my mom was a, uh, a stay-at-home mom, and my dad worked in the mining company. He couldn't afford to buy his contacts. Mm-hmm. Reg- reg- our regular glasses were the black rim glasses. Right. Uh-huh. You know, and sometimes, you know, sure we were goofy looking, but I'll tell you what, when I did get in fights, I never got many black eyes because those glasses they turned protect, around and absorbed it. <laughs> protected, yeah. But in the movie, they turned around and made them thick. Right. So, okay. so we, look, we look a little goonier. Thick framed, yeah. yeah. That was another thing. My son came in when I was watching it, and he was like, where's their helmets, Dad? Oh, yeah. I was like, I was like that. Yeah. I was like, they, they were they were tough back then, and he was yeah. like, yeah. "You can't play hockey without a helmet. What if you get hit in the head?" Yeah. Yeah. I was like, well, "I guess you get hurt." Yeah. Back, back there, <laughs> back then, it was no brain, no pain. Right, right, right. And there was actually goalies. I told him, I was like, "There was a time where goalies didn't wear helmets." Right. He Gump. didn't believe me. I was like, "Just go look it up yeah. on the internet." Gump Worsley. Oh, really? Yeah. Goalies did not wear helmets. No, Gump Worsley, no mask or anything. Nothing. Yep. Oh yeah. my God. I, 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 uh, that's way back then. Yeah, did you ever take a puck off the face or head or anything like I that? I used to be good looking. Look at me now. Oh, Figure come on now. Come on. Give yourself some credit. Oh, yeah. On, I've, had, I've got my scars, <laughs> Nick. So, yeah, I've been split wide open. Yeah. yeah. That's Dang, cool. See, that, has, that, is, that is tough. Um, yeah. Another question I have. All right, the Hanson brothers versus uh, Probert. Bob Probert. All three of us against them? Oh, oh, not all three. Yeah. I say take the take the toughest. Take I would I would turn around to me. I probably would beat Diva get beat. But my brother Jack played for okay. the NHL. He okay. Have a chance. The, back when my brother Jack played, he was one of the top tough guys. So in the tough NHL. son of a bitch, huh? Oh yeah. You know he could hang. You know like Joey Coach and all these big boys. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The Nick Fortuo and his boys. Yeah, Jack might give him a good run for his money. Cool, because we cool. actually we did a did, did a story on Probert, a compelling story. Yeah, just talking about his life and like the tragic ending and the stuff yeah. that happened. But uh, a lot of people don't know the way that some hockey players deal with pain and things yeah. like that is like the drinking, the right. drugs. drugs yeah. and they think it's just some glamorous life, but yeah. it's actually a really tough friggin' sport, man. Yeah, definitely. Have you, have you ever read his book? No. Oh, no. Pick, pick up his book. It's okay. Very, very, um, um, Bob, I'm selling your book. Yeah. A great, great friend of ours, by the way. Really great friend of ours. Great book. Yeah. Well, he just seemed like a family, like just the, the most down to earth yeah. guy. But like, like everybody, um, people don't realize not even in sports, but in life in general, everybody got their demons, man. Everybody oh, yeah. got, everybody got their shit. My grandma would say, yep. Yep. and it was just a shame to see like such a good guy mm-hmm. go down that way. Yep. But I mean, hell, hell of an athlete, like hell great of an athlete, and one hell of a person. And you know what? Uh, he just uh, he had a, he has a great family, and it's just fantastic. It's dirty shame, like you said, he took the wrong path at the wrong time you know mm-hmm. but uh but again re- try, read his book i think you guys really like it i don't know where you can find it but i'll tell you what I, you'll enjoy it you really yeah. enjoy it i'll definitely, definitely check it out man. yeah matt thank you matt saw the documentary and then told me about it i yeah. watched it i think it was on like uh was it on showtime or amazon mm-hmm. yeah. or something i forget and do, uh, it do, was a it was a good very do good guys, documentary do you guys know how to read uh, a little bit we tr- but, I, <laughs> I made it to I made it to twelfth grade. I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's how many we have. Twelve, yeah, right? Yeah, they have an audio yeah. book. I went the whole way, book. the whole way through what I was supposed to do. Uh, how many, how many, years, how many years were you stuck there? How many times you get held back? Right. Still, that was only kindergarten, man. Yeah, you're that's still not in, called. That's not called held back. You're still yeah. in kindergarten. You're still in twelfth grade. Yeah. We'll get the audio book, maybe. We can yes, yes, yeah, they, yeah. they do have yeah, an audio book. Yeah, I'm yeah. sure. Yeah. No, it's good. It's no, good. I'll definitely check it out. I, like we we love stories like that. So. uh I'm trying to think any other questions. I mean, I don't want to forget anything. I don't anything, know, just a slap shot, iconic, iconic film. movie, yep. yeah. Um, it's, it's still it's, standing the test of time. It'll be 30 years from now or 60 years from now when we're all long gone. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And there'll still be people talking about that movie. Oh, uh, for it's sure. A, and it's, what's great about that movie, you can take your Star Wars or any other movies, uh, 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 Star Trek or whatever you got out there. Mm-hmm. This one just seems that we, we, we start with the young puppies all the way to the older people and it's not just that one generation gap like a certain age that mm-hmm. it hangs in there we just keep with the young kids coming up playing hockey i think baseball players basketball players football players we ran in all of them they love the movie they, they love it yeah it's just uh, it's between uh, slap shot animal mouse and caddyshack to me those are the, the three the, you know, actually yeah yeah, yeah. Caddyshack that, that and animal house. There, you know it's uh, 
Yeah. They're, they're good movies. They're, so they're, I, I, I could watch over and over and over again. And then now we were, we I was born in '75, Madden '76, so. But the '70s seemed like a great era. I know we enjoyed the '80s and stuff. It just yeah. seems like, and that's why we like reviewing those movies from that, those eras. Yeah, it just seemed like such a fun time. At least the way it's depicted in movies. Like I said, we were still kids in the '80s, but I have a fond memory of that. Yeah. And when I watch movies like this, I, I just think like everybody just seems so relaxed and we're having a good yeah. time. People weren't uptight, and uh, I just really enjoy it. Nudley, did you think of a question finally? I did think of a question when uh, you yes. leave. All right, Nudley. So other than hockey, did you play any of those sports, baseball? Uh, I played baseball, uh, uh, Little League and high school baseball. Uh, I wish I'd been smarter and took up bowling and golfing, but yes. no. I, <laughs> I, I, I Longevity. Yeah. Okay. yeah. And then when I got out of hockey, which I live in Muskegon, Michigan, I became an electrician for 35 years. Oh, nice. So I go from one dangerous sport to another to one. Another one, Because right? that shit hurts when you get big. Yeah, well, watch out imagine. for the 480. Yeah, yeah. yeah exactly. <laughs> I got hit by 220 one time. That's Ooh. Ooh, that's Ooh. not good. Yeah, that um, my pap, he worked at the steel mill, but he said he worked with uh, my uncle was an electrician, and they said that sometimes the test stuff, they would put the back, back of their back hand because yep, yep. if you went like that, you could yeah. grab it and not lock you in. Yeah, but it holds on to your grab. Yeah, yep. they they would go like that. Just that, that's it just, a it's an old electrician thing yeah, I learned yeah. from my from my pat. Right. I don't know if it's a true. I guess it uh, is. A lot, a lot of people. Well, it tell makes me sense. That too. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. It'll, yeah. it'll just. Right. You'll grip on. Yeah. Um, I do have one more question. Uh, if you had to put out there for any young, like I said, the young pups coming up, uh, three hockey movies that they should watch, or two besides Slapshot. Slapshot two. Slapshot okay. 3, yeah. <laughs> Slapshot 3. <laughs> Slapshot 3. Slapshot 3. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, uh, and, and, uh, not to preach, but if you, these kids are good at playing hockey, you got to remember one thing. School is huge. Mm -hmm. And if you want to go, you want to go to a hell of a nice college with a full ride, they'll help mom and dad out. Definitely, mm -hmm. yeah. And not only that, once you get there and you accomplish yourself and you're really good, the chicks will be there, man, and the chicks are great. Uh, I believe <laughs> that's it. all you need to know. Yeah, that's that what is, college is that all is about. What that is what it's all about. Yeah, yeah. but I guess the, 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 uh, I've never I've been to a lot of colleges, but never for schooling. But I'll tell you what, the atmosphere, the way the the, 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 the fans are there, and they back you all the way. Like they got the uh -huh. college uh, playoffs coming up now. I was watching a little bit last night. Right. It's fantastic. It's fantastic. Yeah, Penn State had a decent squad this year. Oh, yeah. Penn State's up there in yeah, hockey, they, which they I was won, like, I didn't even. They won. They won uh, yesterday. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. I actually have a guy I work with. His son's a very good. He's playing in Omaha for the. Uh, he's like 17. That yeah. that, yeah. and he's got a full ride to Miami of Ohio, so he'll be playing college beautiful, there. Beautiful, yeah. beautiful. And then, Minnesota. Uh, Minnesota has a great team. Yeah. Uh, they always yeah. have what well, Boston usually right. in there. Yeah. Um, yeah, the, what, the Frozen Four is coming yeah. up. Mm -hmm. Yep. Mm -hmm. And the Midwest, you take uh, Minnesota, basically, what's there, uh, seven or eight uh, D1 uh, divisions out there. And, mm -hmm. Of course, uh, Michigan. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, you get the East Ohio Coast. Ohio State plays pretty well. Yeah, yeah they yeah. play pretty well in hockey. Yeah, that, that, that's big, you know. And again, but you got to have your, your schooling in there to get mm -hmm. there. Mm -hmm. Yep. Because you want that full ride. That's it, man. That's it. You get that education. So, kids, watch Slapshot number one, get an education. Skate a lot. And get a scholarship. Yeah. Yeah. That helps mom and dad out. Yeah, exactly. And yeah, wise words. So. Mm -hmm. Play hard. Play hard. Play hard. That's right. Jeff, you got anything else you want to uh, no, let the I fans just know? Thank you guys for having me here. And I'm, I'm, I'm glad we're here to help uh, breast cancer out and everything else. So we've helped raise over about $15, $20 million for different uh, charities. Uh, That's awesome. Warriors and a bit. And uh, hopefully continue this and uh, uh, keep moving forward with the Andrew Brothers. Because I really enjoy being out here and talking to clowns like you guys. Clown, thank you, That's thank awesome. you. That's an honor. You know, That's an honor. You we'll can't be the Hanson Brothers, but you guys can be the Three Stooges. We'll take okay. it. Cool. Hey, we'll, we'll take it. We'll take we're, it. We're, 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 not, we're not a goon. We're, cl we're clowns. Yeah. Clowns. We'll hey, take that's it. it. We'll hey, take get it. hats made up, I guess. It's, yeah, it's yeah. still a compliment. It is. It I is. appreciate it. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, thanks again, Jeff. You man. It was great. Thank you very much. Thank you. So we hope you enjoyed that interview with Jeff Carlson. Great guy. Like I said, he was fun to talk to. Thanks to Nutley Nick for hanging out with us. Zap couldn't be there, but of course Zap loves this movie and couldn't wait to do the Vintage Cinema Review, so we're going to give that to you after we're done with this interview here with Christian Hansen, who was nice enough to do a Zoom call with us. Thanks to John the Juice Man Jerry for setting that up. Christian did a little Q&A with us about Slapshot and gave us some cool stories, so we're going to give you this little interview before we get into the movie, so sit back, relax, and enjoy Christian Hansen. Hey, this is Dave, Matt, and Zap here with the Old Dirty Basin Podcast. Here with uh, Christian Hansen. How's it going, Christian? Doing well. How are you guys doing? Doing good. 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 Thank you, so Christian. It is a pleasure. Thanks for joining us, man. Thank you so much. Absolutely. Likewise. Likewise. So, yeah. whose whose basement is it? And how dirty is it? it? It'd be my basement, <laughs> and, and we it's 
the, the other side's real dirty. The, this side, <laughs> this side was renovated. But <laughs> I was gonna say it looked, it doesn't look too dirty. Yeah, with, no, these, no. Time, with the yeah. exception of some, <laughs> with the exception of some clutter <laughs> on the old recording table, it's actually quite pristine down here. Yeah, we're, the we're old some, cluttered some, basement. Yeah. It was some play on words. Eventually, yeah. if we make money, we'll start making it look more dingy. Yeah, <laughs> more dingy yeah. <laughs> to a worse location. Like it. yeah. It's yeah, similar to the the old uh, the old rapper ODB. ODB. Yes. That, that's kind of where we pulled the name from. Yes, we're yeah. big big fans of that. So, Christian, we're doing Slapshot. Obviously, you're familiar with the movie. Your dad, Dave Hansen, was in the movie. So, growing up, like we talked about on the previous interview, you were aware of the movie. You said you saw it when you were about 13, maybe, the first time? Yeah, it was, I would say, right around 13. It was, I remember we took one of those youth road trips where we were going, I think we were going to Cleveland or somewhere for a day game. And so, the whole team loaded up a bus and maybe five parents went on the trip and on the way back, one of the dads popped in the movie and my parents weren't on the weren't on the bus. So that was the first time I saw it. And my dad's, you know, he's he's a fairly quiet individual. And so seeing the Jack Hansen character for the first time was uh it was a bit eye opening because it's not the guy that I saw around the house. I remember getting in the car and telling my mom and my dad, you know, Hey, we watched Slapshot on the bus. And they were both at the same time. I was like, wait, what? <laughs> yeah. That's and great. Then, the yeah, added, then they had the that conversation, <laughs> yeah. you know, explaining movies and acting and you know, how that's different than real than life. Real life, Right. Yeah. They actually, they say for, uh, for a lot of hockey players coming up, they call that the Bible, that movie. That's something that they, Anybody that's an aspiring hockey player, it's, it's something like a, a rite of passage. You have to watch that movie. Well, as Christian said, I think he, he a lot of that stuff you see as a movie, but he was saying, you know, it's pretty much based on real life in, in the 70s hockey. Like, that's mm-hmm. the way it was, even though they make it look well, like it's even, different. But. Yeah, even, I mean, even today, I think there's a reason that in 2023, people still like it so much. It's because, you know, as a hockey player, you can relate to it. It's, you know, it's rough around the edges. I think anybody who's ever rode a bus or had to travel for hockey can relate to slap shot in, in some capacity, whether it's playing in an arena, like one of those old arenas or cramming onto the bus, playing the cards or trying to find ways to occupy your time on the road. Mm -hmm. Um, You know, everybody has one of those teammates in the locker room, whether it's Mo or it's Billy Charlebois. So there's so much in the movie that, you know, hockey players and athletes in general can relate to as well. I think that's why even in 2023, it's as popular as it is now. Right. Like Slapshot trying to make it into the NHL, even going with the uh, thing that Juice had Mm -hmm. for the the Pucks with Pros that just looking at that old Hershey arena. Mm -hmm. And this place is like those guys are playing constantly in places like that, just trying to make it. No doubt. So, yeah, it gives you a sense of where they're coming from. Mm -hmm. Zab, you got any questions? Oh, yeah, just a quick one. So, you know, Christian, your dad, of course, played uh, Jack Hansen in the movie. Uh, In real life, though, of course, he was an actual hockey player, played for the Johnstown Jets. Uh, how long was, uh, how long was your dad in, you know, in hockey, you know, be it minor, major, you name it. He played professional hockey, I believe Zap for 10 years. Okay. And so he had, yeah, he had a pretty good career that took him. He had, he played in the NHL for a while, played in the WHA, the American hockey league, the IHL, I think pretty, pretty much every professional league that there was in the sure. late seventies, early eighties, his path took him there. That's so awesome. he, he, f- he fought his way through them all, and you look up his hockey DB, and he was very similar to the type of player that you saw in the movie. I think what a lot of people don't realize, though, is as a player, you know, he was actually you know, fairly skilled as well. You look at his stats, and there are some seasons where he had you know, 10, 15 goals, 10, 15 assists, wow. and 300 penalty minutes. I mean, it, it's something. So he really wasn't just one of those guys who had you know, one assist and 300 penalty minutes he actually had quite a you know a bit of offensive production as well my gosh yeah can i ask a quick question would you say that after the movie that their their style had to change because as they were playing guys that saw the movie thought that they were you know like they were in the movie and wanted to fight them i I would imagine so probably john yeah i think uh you know it's one of those things as soon as the movie came out there were probably a lot of people in the leagues that wanted to be that guy you know hey i guess what you see slap shot i was I, I fought one of those guys the other night so you know i definitely think that once the movie came out there was a little bit of that that's cool so we had uh jeff carlson on did an interview with him did your dad ever tell you any like cool stories about filming process or maybe like like uh working with paul newman or any of the actors in, in the movie any cool stories that he told you yeah he said he said paul newman was awesome yeah. he said the first time he ever met paul newman um was actually before they even started filming the movie. So when they cast Paul Newman, 
he came to Johnstown because he wanted to see what it was like to be a hockey player. He mm. wanted to really dive into the culture and experience it. And my dad said he was taking a pregame nap one time and there was a knock on the door. And so my dad walks downstairs and he goes, I'm in a, a t-shirt and my underwear. And I answer the door and he goes, and there's a guy standing there. <laughs> and my dad goes, Hey, the guy goes, Hey, how are you? He goes, good. How are you? The guy goes, good. Are you Dave? <laughs> he goes, yeah. He goes, who are you? He goes, I'm, I'm Paul Newman. That's why. Wow. Like, wow. You know, well, what are you doing here? And he's like, well, you know, I came in. I wanted to see, you know, kind of see the culture, meet the guys, see what everything was like. So what, what are you doing? And my dad goes, I'm taking a nap, you know, pregame <laughs> nap. I have, a, I, I have a game today. And Paul goes, oh, you got a TV? Dad goes, yeah. He goes, you got beer? Dad goes, yeah. He goes, all right, go back to bed. I'll just sit on the couch and watch your races. That's, <laughs> that's awesome. awesome. Oh, my God. That's fantastic. That, that is so cool. <laughs> you know, to hear stuff like that. Cause I'm sure they have so many cool stories like during filming and stuff like that. Jeff that, Carl, he, he was saying that Paul Newman did enjoy a couple beers here and there. I oh guess yeah. they went out and just, you know, a couple nights, they just went out and got wrecked, you know, yeah. just had fun and drank some beer and I shot mean, the shit. Those were the days though. I, I mm -hmm. then we're going to talk about it, but there's a, there's so many scenes in there where it takes pl place in those seventies lounges oh, where everybody it, with the huge <laughs> collars, everybody's yes. smoking, everybody's drinking, like everybody's having a good dance and just mm -hmm. a great, great time. time. Yes. So, so uh, like we don't want to hold you up here too long, Christian, but I looked on your Twitter page, so we went on to follow you. You got Pert Plus in the background, and, and uh, you have great hair. Did you ever think about acting, getting into acting? <laughs> yeah, that is, that is, that, that's against Fraser there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah no, I, I, I would have loved a career in acting, um, you know, but I, I think acting is probably as cutthroat or as hard to get into as hockey, and mm -hmm. I, I thoroughly enjoyed hockey, so I took that path. You know, I'm lucky that... I have some friends just through playing hockey and spend, I would spend my summers out in California. And it's, it's interesting that actually a lot of people in Hollywood, they enjoy hockey. It's one of mm -hmm. their, it's one of their favorite sports. So just through playing the game, I've been able to meet some people in Hollywood and whatnot. So I'm able to, you know, kind of get that taste of it and hang out with them a little bit. Sometimes when they're filming movies, I'll go hang out and, and just, you know, get a little bit of that, but you know, I'm happy with the career path that I took. And then just, you know, I'll, hang out with them and, and enjoy those perks. That's Ke awesome. Keanu stunt double or something. Yeah, you could be Keanu. Keanu. <laughs> if, they, if they ever do a hot, like a hockey movie, yeah, yeah, hockey you movie. could be in there. Uh, no, honestly, yeah. Yeah, yeah for so sure. was John Wick on there. I was like, what? <laughs> Fuck that. Keanu can be Christian stunt <laughs> That's double. That's right. Yeah, yes, you're right. You you're right. You're right. In the movie. <laughs> I like you, Zap. Yeah, hey, man. Yeah, no, yeah. we are, we are, all of us, we are, we are so thankful that you, you know, took the time out of your day to join us today. Like, this was just, just awesome. Really, uh, thank you so very much, man. Absolutely. Yes, yeah, we appreciate, we, we appreciate you so much. Uh, and, and thanks to John for hooking us up with all, with all these hockey players and refs and everybody else. It's an honor to get cool stories like that and insight. Christian, do you, do you have a quick uh, answer to how, the, there was originally supposed to be the three Carlson brothers that played the Hanson brothers. So how is it that it ended up being your dad's last name for the Hanson brothers? Yeah, so it was supposed to be uh, – so the team consisted of the three Carlson brothers and then my dad, Dave Hansen. And so there were the three Carlson brothers, and my dad was Killer Hansen on the actual on the actual Johnstown Jets. And like I was saying before, you look at their hockey DB or their stats, and I think three of the four of them had 200, 300 penalty minutes. Oh, and so what happened was when they went to start filming the movie, they were doing it during um, – playoff time and jack carlson actually got called up to the nhl for playoffs so he wasn't able to be in the movie mm. so what they kind of realized was well hey you know we, we still have you know three of the four here so why don't we just make these three the brothers and then we can have somebody else kind of fill the role as killer so i think just kind of i don't even know just kind of sitting around they realized that killer carlson kind of rolls off the tongue yeah and mm -hmm. so they had dave killer carlson and then they made the three brothers the Hanson brothers there you go they just flip flop the names that's, that's awesome yeah. hey movie that's movies at its finest yeah. just simple <laughs> filmmaking yeah <laughs> yeah for sure you guys got any uh questions about slap shock before we wrap it up uh, no no after that one i'm my mind is blown <laughs> yeah but Christian, man, again, we appreciate it. Yeah, we appreciate you taking time with us. And th thanks again to Juice Man, John Jerio, for uh, hooking us up. And I guess that's it. Yeah, thank yeah. you, gentlemen. Thank you, Christian. Yeah, fellas, thank you yeah. so much, like, Christian. Thanks, Christian. Thank you Have so much, one. man. We'll yeah, thanks, guys. Look forward to seeing you soon. Yeah, awesome. awesome. Thank you. Thank you. All right, take care. Yeah, Bye. We'll see right. you. Bye-bye. Hey, this is Dave. Matt. And Zap. And welcome to the Vintage Cinema Review. Where every week we review some of our favorite films from the past. Hey, there ain't no late fees here. 
Silence is golden. And be kind. Rewind. Good evening, gentlemen. What's going on? Gentlemen. 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 Yeah. Yeah, we got a, a oldie, but a very, very goodie very popping good. in popping in the old VCR today. By far and away, my favorite sports movie. Forever. That dude, forever. Okay, nice. You yeah. can have your Rudy. You can have your Hoosiers. You can have your Invincible. No, man. Slap shot. Hey, hey watch Take Rudy. It. We got some Notre Dame alum yeah. coming on. Fair. There. That's yeah. fair. That's All fair. Right. Just, just chill, chill. True, true. So, yeah, slap shot. Rated R, 1977. This came out, so we were a little too young, I guess, maybe to go see that. Yeah, I didn't. The theater. Did, yeah, I wasn't watching this at one year old. Yeah, Paul Newman's gear in this. Yeah, it's nice. Like, I got to start bringing that back. I know. Man. Heck Some yeah, good stuff. Heck yeah. So the uh, the running time on this at 122 minutes, so a little over two hours, and the release date was February 25th, 1977. So rate right the beginning of 77. This is kind of a hometown movie too, right? Uh, Johnstown. Yeah. yeah. Not too far away. Uh, directed by George Roy Hill and written by Nancy Dowd. This one was produced by Robert J. Wunsch and Stephen J. Friedman. The budget on this, $6 million. <laughs> Box office. You guys want to take a guess? Didn't it bomb? That's I'll go, I'll ju- just for a round number, I'll say 10. 10? Now, $28 million. Whoa, whoa. Yeah, That kind of shocked me, too. Man. Because I wasn't under the impression like that. Our dad's like, it's like Newman's in it. Got to go see <laughs> it. Go see it. Yeah, Newman. A lot of this. So that, that, that's the thing. We've done this before with, um, it, it, this has come up with, um, oh, what's the guy's name with the mustache? Burt Reynolds. So back in the day, there was the thing where, hey, man, look, there's a new Burt Reynolds movie coming out. Look, go. I don't give a shit what it's about, but Burt Reynolds is in it. So let's go see it. Same thing with Paul Newman. He was the man, yeah. He is the man, still to this day, still, the man. Yeah. Paul Newman is awesome. Uh, yeah, so filming location on this was Johnstown, Pennsylvania, so not far. Well, I shouldn't say not far, but nearby, Pennsylvania. Like near, three, yeah, 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 nearby Pennsylvania. <laughs> yeah. it's, it's in there. Also, Utica, New York, and Hamilton, New York, and uh, Syracuse, New York. So huh. Different uh, skating rinks and stuff like that. Oh, were they? Okay. Yeah. Because it was, I mean, if you watch, uh, there's not many in town there, but yeah, I guess that is Johnstown. Mm-hmm. Yeah, for I've been sure. Been there like maybe once, twice. Now, now they they named this like a fictional town. It was like Charles Charleston, right? Charlestown. Charles yep. Yeah, but uh, that was supposed to be Pennsylvania, correct? Or was it another state? I don't think they said it. Did they? Did they, they ever reference it? Or? They never at any time referenced that I can the remember, state. Yeah, okay. not at all. That'd be a mailbag item, maybe like yeah, if you can find it in there. Yeah, somebody send, send it on us in. and let us know. Um, so that's pretty much it for the the. Uh, you know, the filming location, budget, all that stuff. So, Zab, you got the cast there. I do, and it's extensive. We've got Paul Newman as Reggie Dunlap, Struther Martin as Joe McGrath, the Charlestown Chiefs manager, mm. Michael Antkean as Ned Braden, Jennifer Warren as Francine Dunlap, Lindsay Krause as Lily Braden, Jerry Hauser as Dave Killer Carlson, Jeff Carlson as Jeff Hansen, Steve Carlson as Steve Hansen, David Hansen as Jack Hansen. The Hansen brothers. Yeah, yeah how about that? Yeah. The infamous and forever famous and forever loved Hansen brothers. And, and just to keep them in order here, so people might know them more by their number. So Jeff Hansen was number 18, uh, Steve Hansen 17, and Jack Hansen 16. Nice. Yeah, because they, they, they do look alike out there with them glasses. <laughs> they do. They absolutely do. Yeah. We've got Yvonne Barrett as Dennis Lemieux, Alan Nichols as Johnny Upton, Brad Sullivan as Morris Moe Wanchuk. Uh, Moe was, he was the pervy one. Oh, yeah, the one who's always, up. Like, always hooking up. We're looking for some, <laughs> from, for some tang. Yeah, he was yeah. just the dirty old man. He was old. He was there. in a couple movies. I couldn't really put his face. Is, uh, he I, was I, in Untouchables. He played the, uh, actually, oh, uh, he played the accountant. There you go. In the Untouchables. In the account, uh, in the Untouchables. Okay. 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 Yeah, he, he had that face. I was like, <clears throat> I've seen him before. Accountant, bookkeeper, whatever you want to call it. Uh, we have Stephen Mandillo as Jim Aaron. Yvonne Ponton as Jean Guy Druin. Matthew Cowles as Charlie. Catherine Walker as Anita McCambridge. 
Melinda Dillon as Suzanne Hanrahan. Mm-hmm. So there you go. Yeah. So this is we saw a uh, nudie pic or a nudie shot of the mom from a Christmas, <laughs> Christmas story. Christmas story mom, yes. which I. I was like, I know her, right? Mm-hmm. And I had, I had, to, I, I googled it while I watched it because I don't remember like noticing. She had a nice pair, yeah, yeah, yeah for sure. Yeah, for a lesbian, not too bad. I didn't see her. Oh yeah, face. She, well yeah, she, yeah <laughs> for, in the movie, in the movie, she played. Yeah. Les- She's a lesbian. I didn't see her face. I didn't. Yeah. I, Apparently, oh yeah, <laughs> nice. I wasn't what do you notice first? Yeah. Right. No, it's funny you said uh, that's that's a part of the movie too. The the lesbian. Yeah, thing. that's right. Oh, that's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Drove the guy nuts, dude. I not for nothing. I'm old school, right? I love this movie only because the the concept of political correctness oh does God. not exist. Yeah, the dialogue does well, not, not exist. Seven, no, no. Uh, we have M. Emmett Walsh as Dickie Dunn, Susie Kurtz as Shirley Upton. Paul Diamato as Tim Dr. Hook McCracken, Christopher Murney as Tommy Hanrahan, Blake Ball as Gilmore Tuttle, Ned Dowd as Ogie Oglethorpe, Andrew Duncan as Jim Carr, Nancy Dowd as Andrea, Barbara L. Shorts as Bluebird, Connie Madigan as Ross Mad Dog Madison. Mark Bosquet as Andre Poodle Lucier. Rod Masters as the organist. And Joe Nolan as Clarence Screaming Buffalo Swamp Town. I don't think you can. This is a political correctness. <laughs> that's the guy. That's the Indian. <laughs> that's the, the Indian. That comes uh, skating out. He looks like he could. He looks like the poster boy. The. The, the inspiration for the Chicago Blackhawks the, the, the uh, mascot. Mascot. There you go. I was thinking, uh, what was the cigarette pack that were the all natural ones had the Indian on the front? He kind of looked like that. American guy. Spirit. American Spirit. There that's, you what go. I, that's what he reminded me. And that's it. That's all I got for the cast. Nice. Sure, not nice. A, we didn't miss anybody. I'm, I actually I cut people out because oh. I didn't I couldn't remember who the hell they were. Yeah, they didn't matter as much. That might have been thirty names I just rattled through, so that was enough. Yeah, we got the team, a couple of the groupies, a couple of the wives. Yeah. We're in there. We're good. So, Matt, you got a brief synopsis. Here's a brief synopsis of the film Slapshot. In the small... Oh, holy crap. In the small New England town of Charlestown... There it is. The area, not okay. the state. Yeah, true. Yeah. New, New England, though. They're trying to make it seem like... Hey. Oh, okay, mm-hmm. here we go. I'm sorry. In the small New England town of Charlestown, the local mill is about to lay off 10,000 workers... The town's minor league hockey team, the Charlestown Chiefs, is doing no better. After years of failure, this will be the team's last season. Exasperated player and coach Reggie Dunlap, played by Paul Newman, lets the club's recent accusations, the Hanson brothers, play. The brothers' actively violent and thuggish style of play excites the fans. Dunlap retools the team using violence to draw some big crowds. It's basically the movie. That's, That's the movie. Yeah, slap shot. <laughs> awesome. There you have it. You know, New England, I would have never guessed. Yeah, it I, doesn't look I, I just figured like it was Pennsylvania, but mm, I don't know. I, I mean, guess it, just because yeah, it is Johnstown. It's Johnstown, PA. It's filmed in PA. It's, right. They didn't want to say Pennsylvania because New England sounds if you've ever If you've ever driven through the town of Johnstown, mm-hmm. you will see every scene that you've seen in that movie. Every single one. It hasn't changed. Not a it's bit. It's the same thing. It's the same thing. Wow. I mean, maybe some storefronts have changed, like Ree and Derek might not be around oh, anymore. Yeah, it might be a CBS. Or Murphy's might not be around, but whatever. The thrift Drug, do they have those? Uh, is that only around here? Remember Thrift Drug? They, no, they, they're everywhere. John, they Wan- John Wanamaker's, I yeah. believe, was there. I don't know if that, that might be a too highfalutin store for know. Johnstown. They did have the lady who did the uh, hair. Yeah. Her little spot was there. I, I had a throwback to an old Francine. story that I actually mm. forgot about. And an old picture from a local mall here, Pomeroy's. My mom worked at Pomeroy's. Yeah, yeah. I forgot about Pomeroy's. Oh yeah, yeah. Used to get my uh, my pants hemmed there. Mm-hmm. Hmm. There at uh, John was it? No, that's John Wanamaker. Was Wanamaker's it? was the high end one, and then there, like they had like polo and all that in there. But what was uh wasn't there a name before Pomeroy's or was it just Pomeroy's? Pomeroy's was always Pomeroy's. I didn't know if it had a first name like J Pomeroy's, J. Pomeroy. W Pomeroy. Might be the dude. I don't know. Could be. Could be. I neglected to mention earlier the juice was definitely worth the squeeze on that. Oh my god, yeah. I mean and to take that movie and turn eight million into twenty some million for a hockey movie. Yeah. I didn't see that. Like you said, I thought maybe not. I, I thought it probably broke even. I, yeah. I, wow. In my opinion, it, it earned every dollar. Oh my god, god, damn! Do I love this movie? This is great. 
So yeah, you guys probably heard the interviews earlier with uh, Jeff Carlson from the movie. Heard them, lived them. Lived them, yeah. So he pointed out some cool stuff from the movie. And then also Christian Hansen, whose dad, Dave Hansen, was in the movie as one of the Hansen brothers. Yeah, two great guys. Yeah. Uh, yeah, cool, absolutely. Cool stand-up dudes. So that was cool to listen to some stories about you know, about the movie through them. And now Zap's going to take us, I guess, through the movie. Yeah. That's, if you haven't seen it, but we're hoping you have. If Yeah, if you haven't seen this movie, don't sleep on this. It's out there. Go get it. You might pay a couple of bucks if you have to, you know, digitally download or digitally ninety nine. Right. I think. All right. Mm-hmm. I fortunately have the DVD, so I watched it for free. Yeah. Which was nice. Three ninety nine, well spent. So I got that going for me. All right. So as Matt had aptly said. What did I aptly say? This movie is set in the fictional town of Charlestown, uh, a blue-collared town centered around a steel mill. Uh, we start this movie out with a short interview between the, the hockey announcer uh, and color commentator Jim Carr and Charlestown Chiefs goalie Dennis Lemieux. Now, dude, his accent is so thick. The goalies? Yes, oh, it's yeah. a good accent, though. French Canadian. It's French, yeah. Very Unbelievable. Frenchy. Unbelievable. So good. Did you... Uh, uh, should I do a do, 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 do fun fact on that real quick? Sure. Go for it. They said when they did that scene, he was wrong in half of like like the sticking, the high the high stick. Yeah. They, they said it, that was a funny part of it, but they didn't ever correct it because they just they thought it was gold. Yeah. It was cinema well, gold. It's, it's gold because this guy's trying to find English. Yeah. So he knows what he's trying to say. He's just using the wrong terms. Which his character was great. He was good. I like that guy. So speaking of, the Charlestown Chiefs is the town's minor league hockey team part of the Federal League, and currently going through a losing season with a rowdy fan base. In the first game of the movie, we're introduced to Reggie Dunlop, the captain and coach of the team, Ned Braden, the Chiefs' uh, right wing, and Killer Carlson, an injured Chiefs defenseman. The next day, the members of the Chiefs participate in a fashion show to raise money and advertise for the team. Yeah, fuck that shit. Dude, all of, <laughs> so all of the players hate it, and the dialogue in this was hilarious yes so like there's one dude i forget I, and i didn't I, I shame on me for not looking up but one of the players who kind of resembles uh crispin glover or a george mcfly look with a like a bowl cut mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. he's just standing there looking at the look at himself in the mirror and the next uh the next guy who actually looks like uh john bonham the drummer from zeppelin he's uh he's chief's defensive man uh johnny upton he uh as the manager's walking around he says I'm going to flash him. And sure enough, he walks out and he does exactly that. Yes, you hear the screaming. Oh, and my the God. Hollering yeah. and the carrying on. People, are, women are losing their minds, with the exception of his wife, as we he had said. Yeah. We're like, what the hell is this? Yeah. So, not long after, we find Reggie Dunlop and Ned Braden participating in a radio interview with Jim Carr. Uh, the interview's already off to a bad start when a heckling fan calls in and just degrades Reggie, calls him an old man, wash out, you know, washed up, just done. Because, well, how old was Paul Newman? Do we ever get to that? I think 52. Jeff Carlson's 52. Mm-hmm. I don't know many 52-year-olds. So in 77, Newman was 52. Mm-hmm. Damn. That's what I'm, he, he did. He looked um, he looked unlike the other players there. Yeah, he just looked yeah. like a very an older man. I mean, still handsome. It's Paul Newman. Right, right. But he didn't look like a, a hockey player. Hockey player, yeah. He made a, you know, despite, despite I should say not even despite, in addition to having such a great acting career, he did a bang-up job with that salad dressing line. Oh, and the popcorn. Oh, yeah, yeah. Just, yeah, he makes some good stuff. He makes some good money. Yeah. It's Paul Newman. Yep. After that, uh, after that uncomfortable interview, we find Reggie and Ned walking through the town discussing what will happen when the mill closes down because the mill is scheduled to close on April 1st with 10,000 workers who are scheduled to be laid off. Mm, that's no money in the town. Not at all. It's a po town. As they're walking around, they're collected by Ned's wife, Lily, in her van. It's clear she not only hates being in the town, but also that her and Ned are going through a pretty bad spell in their marriage. So this, she picks up these two in this old, old beater blue van, and she's just furious driving down the mountain or yeah, down, down the, that hill, yeah. mm-hmm. airborne. Like that van gets airborne on some of those dips. It kind of reminded me of the A team, like yeah. when they were like, yep. yeah. <laughs> it looked like kind of like the A team type van, but like right. the, the she was or just who's, dri- the, who's the boss van too? Yeah, really, yeah. but she was just driving. Oh, right. She was yeah. just driving like she was a uh, A teamer. Domanto, <laughs> Domanto, Andalo, <laughs> Andalo. Yeah, Mona. Who was uh, promiscuous? I think. Oh yeah, Mona oh, was. Mona, she yeah, was yeah. giving it away. That's why they called her Mona. Mm. I don't understand that girl's character. She had a weird character. It was cool, but I, I didn't get her whole vibe. The whole Mona, thing. the grandmother. No, uh, no, no. Lily, Lily. Lily. Uh, Ned's wife? Yeah. So she was just, look, man, she's she's married to a guy who's a smart dude. He's a college graduate, 
and this guy just wants to play hockey for a yeah. living. Like, so she just wants to get out of town. Yeah, she's she, like, what are you doing? She's like, you could be doing so much more mm-hmm. with your mind, and you're you're playing hockey. Mm-hmm. She's just like a Debbie Downer. I mean, it, and it's and it, you know the town. She's not into it. Where they're at, like you said. No, man, she's living in a beat, dirty, or just washed out blue collar town. That hap- that town's going to go out of business when the mill closes. Yeah, but she could she could rise up. She can go to school, get her own. I mean, maybe she is. In school. I don't know. Maybe she right. graduated. she could have got out of the town. Well, she doesn't need to because, as we learned in the movie, she actually came from money. Yeah, that's what she says. But yeah, I she thought came that from was money. A, I thought that was a joke. I thought that was mm-hmm. sarcasm. She's got nothing to worry about. She came All from right. money. That's good. That's good. So, in the next scene, we find the team's manager, Joe McGrath frantically on the phone trying to cut costs, cancel orders, sell existing equipment, et cetera, et cetera. Reggie arrives in uh, McGrath's office and is directed to go collect a new group of players who will be joining the team. Immediately after, at the train station, Reggie arrives and we're introduced to the Hanson brothers. That's not the musical group, by the mm. way. That, that is uh, the... See, I'm not going to sing on that one. Thank you, Matt. I could have <laughs> umbopped my way could've. through, That's through right. a whole two minutes. This is just a group of three rowdy-as-hell hockey players. Now, these are clearly a bunch of guys who haven't quite grown up yet. This is obviously evidenced by having uh, brought uh, toy cars with them and their luggage. And, yeah, yeah, Jeff actually said that was legit. They actually really did take cars and, like, toys around. The in real life, that's in what his, they did. In, in the interview, they showed up. They just had, because that's what they did between games, because they yeah. didn't have much else to do. So they would sit there, and, and that's what they did. They raced each other and drank beer. He said, like, a lot of this stuff, in, like 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 uh, Christian said yeah. with that, a lot of yeah. this stuff was modeled in real life. You but know, modeled yeah, off real life. They didn't have anything. They just, just had some good. cars and like mm-hmm. some underwear. It just right. That's hilarious. It yeah. just writes itself. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So upon returning with the Hansons, uh, Reggie immediately makes his way back to the manager McGrath uh, to obviously express his discontent. So he's the, in, the, in this scene. He's talking to the manager, the old man, the manager, and uh, the the manager's like, the, basically, it's like, it, well, it's better that they're playing with toys than playing with themselves. Uh, and then he yeah. he actually then proceeds to tell Reggie the story of a chronic masturbator he'd encountered back in the day. Now, this particular guy he's talking about would get uh, deliberate penalties so he could rub one out uh, when <laughs> he was in the penalty box. box. Yeah. And, the, dude, the face he would be... <laughs> <laughs> he didn't, yeah, yeah. Yeah. That night at the bar, while Maxine Nightingale's right back where we started from plays... Members of the team share a news article about the team while Ned and his wife have a fight. That bar kicks ass, by the way. That's anytime I say 70s lounge and shit like that, like that. This That's is what you're just, picturing. Just That's another great example. I was I was looking around to see if like Chevy Chase was in there. Let's check it out. <laughs> yeah, like in the back corner or something. Just this divey bar, but everybody's having a good time. Uh, so while at the bar, Reggie Dunlop's estranged wife, Francine, arrives. They leave and return to her place. Uh, now, these two had separated seemingly years ago, but, you know, they, they still stay in touch. Now, he's reminded by her that, he, you know, he's not getting any younger. Uh, and again, we just said that this, you know, he, this guy played the part pretty well here as a 52-year-old being in the in the hockey biz. Uh, on that part there, wasn't there one of the one of the teammates was talking to Paul Newman's character and saying, you know, he's like, I, I bet I can score with that one right there. Cause she was dressed up really nice. So that's that, his wife. Yeah. And, and that's where he got him. And then one guy's like, Oh, you idiot. That's his wife. That's right. And in fact, that is the same discussion. The same guy he was talking to the goalie. Yes. Okay. Uh, with the, with a crazy ass hard accent that says he has huge cock like a horse. Yes. <laughs> Paul Newman says, yeah, man, I bet you, what do you think I could, you know, you think I could score with that one, pick her up or something? Jesus. Yeah. And the bartender says, dude, you've been had. Yeah. I just thought that part was funny. Hell yeah. yeah. Pretty smart. So the next day, the team departs for a few games on the road. Uh, I'm sorry, that night, I should say. The team departs for a few games on the road. And Ned shares a very uncomfortable goodbye with his wife. And while they're all sitting on the bus, the Hanson brothers join the team and are hazed a little bit. A few players are concerned that the manager, McGrath, is along for the ride as well. This is something he never does. The next day, who owns the Chiefs? This question was asked nonchalantly. But now Reggie's now curious. Who owns the Chiefs? Suiting up for the game, everybody's ready to play, including the Hanson brothers, who are taping foil to their knuckles. With, that was a great discussion with... Uh, the uh, golf gloves. With Christian, yeah. <laughs> golf yeah. gloves and the, the foil. Uh, Ned overhears McGrath on the phone trying to land a new job. The, again, uh, the, McGrath is the manager. Uh, the Hanson brothers, as, as Paul Newman is starting to, you know, trying to get the team, you know, hey guys, we got a game here. Uh, the Hanson brothers are trying their best to support Reggie's efforts uh, to get, you know, get the team all excited and here we go. And uh, 
after the game that night, the team is informed that this is going to be the team's last season. Mm. Team's going to fold. After the game, the team members go about their business in one of the hotel rooms. There's a game of cards being played. Uh, Mo, the perv, uh, describes a dalliance he'd once had in town uh, with a local barmaid. Uh, Nipples hard as rocks. (laughs) Uh, The guys are sitting around watching the jackpot bowl game show. Uh, This is around here. We had bowling for dollars. This is the equivalent of that. Mm. Uh, And I remember remember bowling for dollars. And Reggie gets a call from an old flame. Now on his way out of the hotel, Reggie stops by the Hanson's room and finds them playing with their toy race car set. Mm -hmm. I can't believe that was true. That's legit. That's Mm -hmm. what he said. Blows my mind. So they traveled with. Yeah. So when next we find Reggie, He's in bed with a player from another team's wife. Hanrahan is the name of the other team's player. And that woman, again, is the mother from uh, A Christmas Story. This is where we're introduced to her nice, nice body. Yes. At the time, age is a bitch, though. I think. I haven't seen her. I don't know. No, I haven't seen her. I think she's dead. Is she? I I know she dropped out of acting. I think she passed. She might have. She might be dead as fried chicken. Uh, oh, so while they're laying in bed having some pillow talk, she mentions she mentions uh, she'd had a dalliance with another woman. Uh, Reggie is more at the time. Reggie is basically more focused on you know recent news of the Chiefs folding and what he's going to do with his life. So the next day, we find Reggie starting to hatch a plan with a local newspaper reporter. Reggie's concocted this story that the the, the Chiefs are in the or there there the, there are talks in the works for the Chiefs to be sold to a retirement community in Florida. Quick side story. Melinda Dillon, who we were just talking about, Christmas Story Mom, she died January 9th of this year, 2023. Well, there you go. 83. Sad day. Hmm. 83, that's a good run. That is a good run. That's why I, I want to make like 83, 87. I think I'd be cool with that. Mm. I just want to be able to, I, I just want to have my mind still with me. I don't want to have somebody change my, my bottoms. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Although... I mean, it can't be that bad. Yeah, but not when you're in dementia land. That's true. You know what right. the hell's going on? Yeah. That's true. Although ignorance is bliss. Yeah, mm-hmm. true, true. Yeah, we'll see. Like a toddler again, you know, when you're that. Yeah, just shitting yourself and mm-hmm. getting spoon fed. Yep. God bless you. <laughs> All right. <laughs> so that night at the Chiefs' next game, Reggie starts a fight with none other than Hanrahan. Again, this is the goalie for the opposing team, that dude's husband, or I'm sorry, that woman's husband. Uh, he... Uh, Reggie keeps egging him on by reminding him over and over again that his wife's a lesbian. Yeah, he got and, in his head the whole game. Dude, that, funny. that scene was great. Like, he just kept going back and forth behind the goal. She's a lesbian. A <laughs> lesbian. <laughs> but the, it was funny because the team, they didn't really like, oh, my God, you, call, you called her a lesbian? Right. Like, yeah. who, who says that? Dude, but that's so that's great because so much to Reggie's delight, uh, the, 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 the dude starts a fight with him. Like, the dude just throws his gloves down and comes after Reggie. Uh, this this fight ignites the crowd, and the fans are excited about hockey again. Mm-hmm. So Ned decries the team's victory as a garbage ah. win. Ned decries it as a garbage win because of uh, the, the, look, you guys you put on a show out there. You know, you're just fighting. Mm-hmm. This isn't hockey. This is you just went out there to stir up the crowd, but it worked. The next day, while driving around, Reggie finds Lily sitting in the town's central park. Lily sees Ned talking with another woman. Uh, and at the same time, Reggie pretends to hit on Lily. He's just trying to it really just like boost up her morale. Like yeah, she's, get up she's, her confidence. Yeah. Let her know that you, you're the best looking woman in this town, which she yeah. really is. She's, she's a cute girl. Yeah. Like, so at, at, at no time was he actually serious about the stuff he was saying to her. Like, again, he's hitting on her like crazy again, just to boost up her morale. It's like, look, you're hot. You're beautiful. You're gorgeous. Oh man, you deserve, you know, all the, the best men in the world. That's really what it was. Also, also trying to show Ned what he has in her and that's that she, right. That he doesn't deserve. A good of a woman as her. Yep. He's trying to help them both. Yeah. Afterwards, at a local bar, the team is sitting around watching a soap opera. Reggie stirs everyone up with a fake story he'd planted in the newspaper about the Chiefs potentially being sold to the old folks community in Florida. <laughs> and the one, uh, the Mo, the the old pervert dude's like, oh, here's to all, every, as everybody's cheering, like, oh, here's to the sap that bought the Chiefs, or here's to the this, that, and the other thing. Uh, Mo says, and here's to all that gorgeous snatch in FLA <laughs> that he's night. A dude, he's a perv. That night in the locker room before the game, Reggie stirs up Killer Carlson by faking his sadness about the possibility of this being his last season and having to retire. Did you have something? Uh, 
No, I forget what I was going to say then. I, I had something. It's on the tip of my tongue, and I forgot it. So, oh no, it was about the uh, the interview that he had stirring up this because uh, Paul Newman's character was good friend with the sports writer, correct? And Reggie wanted, Dunlop. I'm yeah. sorry. Uh, what's his fucking? I don't know. Yeah, but he wanted to get that story out there, and he started this whole Dicky Dunn. Yeah, this whole rumor, like, oh, if Dickie Dunn said it, you know, it must be real. Yeah. Oh, they, Dickie Dunn wrote this. Well, it must be true. But then you see the uh, the real owner towards the end of the movie. Yeah. She's not very nice. No, she's not nice at all. Mm-mm. So at the game, Dave Killer Carlson jumps in to break up a would-be fight between Reggie and an opposing player and gets into the fight himself. Yeah, this Now, the, here's where some quotes that come in I, I've used before. It's like, too much, too soon. The game doesn't even start. Like the game barely even starts, and these guys are the Killer Carlson's just going nuts with this again, just all out brawl. Uh, the fans, of course, love it. The fans go bananas, and with Killer out of the game, it's now the Hansons' turn to get on the ice. Now, these guys are ruthless, hard hitting, absolute fighters. Uh, the fans' excitement grows even more. Uh, hell, the one Hanson, I mean, dude, they just kept hitting and hitting and hitting. Uh, at one point, he does slap shot, sent the puck up, and hit the organist in the head. Which was just priceless. And the organist thereafter wore a helmet. Mm-hmm. Yes. There's fights all over the ice. All three brothers are ejected and are praised by the fans as they exit. The next day, Dennis, the goalie, the guy with the thick accent, inquires of the managers as to who owns the Chiefs on Reggie's behalf. Who owned the Chief? Own. Reggie is assuredly interested, of course. That night, the team goes to watch the Ice extravaganza at the local ice rink. Now, this is women not unlike Rockettes that are performing a, a show on the ice. You know, just Excuse me, around. it is like the Rockettes. 100%. On ice. After the ice extravaganza show at the local lounge, which, again, is awesome. God, I love that lounge. Reggie and a few other teammates are having drinks with a few of the girls from the ice extravaganza show. Reggie sees his estranged wife with another man. And she sees him with one of the girls. Was she was she with Ogie Oglethorpe? Was that the guy that he got, he was so pissed off about? Because mm-hmm. wasn't that Ogie guy? Didn't he he bang like the last girl that was trying to get to the end? They were saying Ogie had her or whatever. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I see what you're saying. Reggie was sitting with the woman who had allegedly had sex with Ogie allegedly. Oglethorpe. Yes, but I thought Ogie was the one that was going home with uh, Newman's wife. There, I, no. I don't know if that was the storyline, but. Yeah, he got a little weird about that. Yeah, that was just, a, well, that's just any dude that, that's yeah, dating his... Looking at your ex. That's right. He just was getting bent. Uh, the next t- the next day, the team's off to their next away game with the newly formed Chiefs Booster Club following right along. Reggie riles up the team before the game, and during warm-ups on the ice, the Hansons start fight with the other team. Now, there's no one to break this up because the game hasn't even started yet. But this is, they're just doing yeah, warm ups. Mm-hmm. So after everybody's beaten and bloody and just beaten the hell up, they're playing in a, one of my particular favorite scenes. They're playing the national anthem, and the rep is already in one of the handsome guy's faces. Tell him, look, I want a clean game. I don't want to see any, you know, nonsense or whatever while the thing's going on. And the guy, the handsome brother, just yells out, I'm listening to the fucking song. <laughs> I think, didn't, uh, didn't uh, Jeff Carlson, didn't he say that that was something that they just, or whatever, he just said it there during the thing? I think there was more. There was supposed to be more in that conversation, but I think that just came out of nowhere. Mm. Mm. I, don't know. I thought that was just hilarious. Uh, the next day before they depart, they find the bus driver uh, hitting the bus with a sledgehammer. I'm making it look mean. Uh, Reggie tries and fails to contact his estranged wife. And on the bus ride to that night's game, Ned continues to express his dislike for what Reggie's done relative to gaining popularity for the team by forsaking hockey and instead just all out brawling and fighting. At the game, a fan in the stands throws his keys at one of the Hanson brothers, and all hell breaks loose. These three brothers take the fight into the stands. Go. Yeah, this was a part that you brought up earlier for hell a question yeah. that we have, and uh, that there was other things to this part of the movie. So it may have not have been keys. It may have been ice. It was a cup of ice. Yeah, yeah you, was, have, you have to hang in to listen for that one. But yeah, that was, uh, yeah, if you... Recall that from the the interview we just did. That was uh, the old wives' tale. I had no idea that that was an actual factual event. Based on it. It's crazy, man. Just absolutely crazy. So the police arrive at the chief's locker room and arrest the Hansons. And as soon as they're bailed out, they're now considered heroes by everybody. And again, I love that Christian's old man was the one that collected the bail money to do that in real life. That's just so cool, man. Like you said, the story writes itself. It's 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 right there. It's so amazing. So the team returns home. And as each member is greeted by their loved ones, Lily, Ned's wife, discovers that Ned is nowhere to be found. 
as he'd gotten off the bus only a mile or so before it reached its destination. He wanted nothing to do with it. Reggie jumps into Lily's van as she drives away. He insists on trying to convince Lily to leave him. Uh, again, this is that this yeah, is that thing trying to mm-hmm. actually help her out. But the, the again, the motives behind this are to make her think of the of the would be extreme results if she did. The next day, from the local diner, Reggie sees his estranged wife Francine and attempts to impress her with tales of the chief's recent success. She doesn't care. She is determined to move on with her life. Reggie then makes his way to uh, the manager's office uh, to find, again, now in this case, to find out who owns the Chiefs. After a radio interview in advance of the night's game, uh, where Reggie had placed a $100 bounty on an opposing player's head, Reggie makes his way home in in hopes of getting a nap. On the air. On the air. (laughs) Yeah, on the air. Yeah, I'm I'm personally putting my own money, my own $100 on whoever lands the first shot. (laughs) Uh, as Reggie makes his way to his place, or Reggie's now in his place, uh, McGra- he's ready to take this nap. The manager calls him to express his outrage for that uh, that interview, the $100 bounty that he put out. Almost immediately after, Killer Carlson calls him up to express his interest in collecting that bounty. And out of nowhere, Lily, again, Ned's wife, shows up at his door with every intention of moving in with him. She comes in with a bag of groceries, a bag of clothes, the dog. She took his advice. She did. Yeah, she's like, all right. Let's make this work. That night at the Chiefs Syracuse game, the fans are ready for a show. Uh, in fact, Reggie even pays an ambulance to circle around with his lights and sirens on. Uh, fans are fighting in the lobby, fighting outside. Uh, Reggie sees the man for whom he'd put the bounty on. That's uh, Tim Dr. Hook McCracken. Uh, this is before the game starts. They're all just walking around in their clothes. Uh, McCracken says to him, Dunlop, you suck cock. <laughs> with uh, uh, Paul Newman immediately responds, all I can get, <laughs> which means as much as I can get. So not long after the game, McCracken tries to pick a fight with Ned, but Ned won't take the bait. Nate, Ned is the one who's just the pacifist, does not want any fighting in this. So Reggie benches Ned, uh, Paul Newman's character Reggie, benches Ned because he won't fight. The next day, Reggie takes Lily into Francine's beauty shop for a makeover. Mm-hmm. Francine and Lily exchange war stories about uh, separation and divorce. You know, for the longest time, I thought Francine was like a Jane Fonda. Kind of. For whatever reason, I thought that was Jane Fonda. But she's got the face. She's got the face, yeah, the hair too. But, that, I mean, that was a popular style in the 70s. True, as was the style at the time. Yes. Meanwhile, Reggie makes his way to the house of the owner of the Chiefs, Anita McCambridge. Now, despite his efforts to increase the team's popularity, Anita has been told by her accountant that it's probably be- the better option would be to fold the team and use it as a tax write-off. He's pissed. He says she's fucked. And here's another one to which he says... Makes fun of the boy. Makes fun of the boy. Makes fun of her kitties. Yeah. He, this he, is like a 10-year-old boy <laughs> that just took the groceries in. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, the mom's sitting there, and, and Paul Newman's just ticked, and, and he just goes off on the kid. Man. He makes his way to Ned's house. From there, he makes his way to Ned's house and proclaims to Ned, who's actually hiding in the woods. Like, he ran out of his house to hide in the woods, so he didn't have to talk to Reggie. He proclaims to Ned that neither he nor anyone on the team needs to fight anymore. The team is going to be done after this season, but, you know, I really want to win this championship the right way. That night, at the championship game. So it was a big change of heart for the Chiefs. So for Reggie... He was building up all this excitement and all the this popularity for the Chiefs in hopes that, hey, look, we're getting popular. We're getting more fans. Mm-hmm. We're getting more money. This has got to be great for the owner. And then he's completely deflated by a need of the owner when she says, ah, no, it's, my, we're done my, anyway. my accountant tells me to just fold the team and be done. Again, so it's time to go back to some old fashioned hockey. Yeah, old fashioned hockey. So that night at the championship game, Reggie informs the team that he'd been lying to them about the Florida deal and that they should play just good old-fashioned hockey. Their opponent, the Syracuse Bulldogs, however, had stocked their team full of goons in anticipation of a a night of fights. They included Tim McCracken, Ross Mad Dog Madison, who actually travels with his attorney, Sam Smallprint Lyman. We also have Clarence Screaming Buffalo Swamp Town, Andre Poodle Lucier, and... Ogie Ogletorp. All right. <laughs> Isn't he in jail? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, so 
whistle blows, fights begin immediately as the Chiefs are each attacked on the ice by members of the opposing team. And it's creepy because all the opposing team, the Syracuse Bulldogs, they're all squaring up against each one of the players, like the, each of the Hansons, mm-hmm. Ned, Reggie, any of them out there. And every single one of the Charlestown Chiefs are just being nice, like, hey, how's it going? Hey, buy you a soda after the game? <laughs> anyway, they get the shit kicked out of them in that first period. And by the end of that first period, the Chiefs are losing the game. Now, during the break in the locker room, McGrath, the manager, informs the players that every scout in the NHL is at the game. They're all here hoping to recruit players to the major leagues. Mm-hmm. So now immediately, uh, the second period starts, the team reverts back to their violent approach to hockey again, and the fans go crazy for it. Lily... Ned's wife uh, arrives all gussied up and dressed up, pressed and dressed and whatever. Yeah, she, she's looking good looking, for a night out. Looking fly, mm-hmm. walking around with uh, Francine, mm-hmm. uh, Reggie's wife. Uh, Ned actually sees her in the crowds cheering for the fighting. So, okay, he's had enough of this nonsense. It's done. He, he doesn't want to fight. Nope, he, he's being told what to do and not none of it makes sense. So he's... He's doing it his way. So while all the other fans are fighting, he ends up performing a strip tease on the ice, right down to his jock strap. Or if you're in Canada, French Canada, jock strap. Jock. Yeah. Syracuse's team captain, Tim McCracken, protests this. This is lewd the behavior on the ice. What's yeah. this guy doing? Protests and just fighting back and forth, mouthing with the referee. Ends up hitting him in the back of the head to dex the, re- the referee when he's not looking. Immediately, Syracuse is disqualified, which means the Chiefs win. The Charlestown Chiefs have won the championship of the Federal League. Days, now, oh, go, no, go, go. Oh, just that part where Ned was skating around or whatever. I think he was showing how ridiculous that the hockey has become. With Correct. All the fighting. He was trying to say, look, I look ridiculous to you, but look how ridiculous you guys look to me right now. Yep. Can we just play hockey? If you're going to do some stupid stuff and run around like idiots, I'm going to do the same thing. I could not agree and more. And they won a game just because of that. That's right to fuck on. That was very succinctly and aptly said. Only in 1977. <sighs> in 77. Mm-mm. Days after the victory, a parade is held in their honor. We learn that Reggie has accepted the offer and offered to be the player coach to the Minnesota Nighthawks. And actually, once he gets there, he wants to bring all the guys from the Charlestown Chiefs with him. Francine drives out of town with all of her possessions, moving away. Somehow, however... Reggie still has confidence that she'll make her way to Minnesota. I don't think so. <laughs> and that, my friends, is slap shot. That was my slap shot. Yeah, I didn't get that ending, like with him skating around until you explained it like that. So I don't know why he was. Just oh, he, he's just adorable. showing how silly. Yeah. That, that he's there game. to play hockey. Yeah. He, he thinks it's nonsense that these guys are fighting. This isn't. This isn't boxing and or it was, yeah, it wasn't MMA. Even, it wasn't even fighting. They were just fighting the fight. They weren't even playing the game. Right. They were just starting fights. And that's what he was saying his team was getting to. But then he's like, that's not what we're here for. We're here to play hockey. If a fight happens, a fight happens. But you don't get these goons, these thugs to go out. And that's what the other team did. He mm-hmm. said, this is stupid. Let's play hockey. If you're going to do that, I'm going to do something stupid too. And they end up winning the game. I got you. Was, that's, was, that, that's it. It was, it was point, counterpoint. Oh, okay. Hmm. Maybe, no. No, no, no. no. The, again, I think that's right to fuck on, man. That, that was absolutely right to fuck on. Uh, in, in the meantime, do, 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 fun facts. Yeah, go ahead. Anybody got, yeah, start with some fun facts. The Johnstown Jets uh, and the the Johnstown Jets was the, the team after which the fake na- team, Charlestown Chiefs, uh, were, were fashioned. Again, this is even after our interview with Christian and, and, and everyone, It's there was this thing, the Johnstown Jets. So... This movie came out in 1977. The Johnstown Jets minor league team folded in 1977. Oh, so mm. that was foreshadowing. I got a, one of the big ones, I guess, is Al Pacino was supposed to be yeah. uh, in this movie. Uh, once they found out he couldn't skate for shit, they said, no, you can't do it. And uh, he, ex- he expressed regret for it, for missing the film. But uh, then he said, it's hard to imagine anywhere else but Paul Newman. Hmm. Yeah, I got one here. Tim, Dr. Hook McCracken, who was Paul Diamando's character, was the model for the face of the Marvel comic Wolverine. I guess they modeled that off his face. I can see that. Yeah. I can see, absolutely see that. That's a great fun fact. I don't yeah. know. If, who knows if it's true or not, but. He looks like it. The sideburns, the hair, the everything. Yeah. There was something where that comic, where he first appeared in a comic, was in 74 or 75, which would have been before this. But in that mm. comic, he had a mask on, and you couldn't really see. Who knows? 
Uh, the rated R, the R rating for this movie, they said because of multiple instances of the F word. So I don't know what, what F word, they, they have to mean the fuck word, right? Yeah. Yeah. That's the F word. Because it said that. And so I was like, I don't know if, if, if that had anything to do with this movie with that. I don't know. I don't well, know. That's what we talked about with Jeff was uh, in the commercials they had to put, and even in the commercial, they put a warning about the language in the commercial yep. that was on TV because it was... But they had a warning, I guess, on the uh, on the poster saying, you know, it's unsuitable for any parent absurd enough to bring their child to view this movie because mm-hmm. of the use of language, language. Mm. which you would have to. They couldn't even go in with an adult. That's it's ridiculous. Mm. Yeah. Uh, let's see this. We've already said it. This movie was filmed and loosely based around Johnstown, Pennsylvania. Um, the Carlson brothers and Dave Hansen uh, played for the Johnstown Jets in real life. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I, I still Love, 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 love that story that that uh, we we talked about with Christian about uh, in the movie. Uh, the one dude has keys thrown at him, and that's based on a real life thing, mm-hmm. where a fan threw a cup of ice uh, at one of the Hanson. I'm sorry, at one of the Carlson brothers, and the three Carlson brothers immediately made their way up in the stands to go find this guy and lynch him. The three Carlson brothers get uh, tossed into jail, and uh, in this case, it was actually uh, Hanson. Dave Hansen in real life who uh, gathered yeah, the bail money to get him out. Hmm. Yeah. They also said in here that uh, for the part of Ned Braden, Nick, Nick Nolte was lobbying for that part. Ooh. And also uh, Don Most, who was uh, Ralph Mouth on Happy Days. Uh, yeah, he was. He the sit also on the yeah. yeah. I could see Ralph Mouth playing the part of Killer Carlson. Mm-hmm. I don't think he would have been a good Ned Braden. Ned Braden. Well, the Killer Carlson was timid. He had like that kind of persona before he became Killer Carlson. Yeah. Red, Reggie Dunlap's car, you know what kind of car that was? It was a 1970, give me a second. I'm going to take jump on, out on a limb here. I'll say 72 GTO. Yeah, it was a 19, you were right the first time, 70 Pontiac GTO. Oh, 70, in, okay. In Baja Gold. Yeah, the color was a little off, but mm-hmm. I guess another 70s color that sure. was popular at the time. Oh, uh, They also said this movie, I don't know if it's necessarily a fun fact, but there was a lot of injuries sustained by the actors and just filming all the fight scenes, trying to make them realistic, but like people getting shots in. Uh, the one Paul Newman got really hurt, I guess, with the one fight going into the penalty box. Mm-hmm. I guess they said he sustained some injuries, but they were really into it. I guess they they put a lot into this movie. Yeah. I mean, these the guys are falling and, on the ice yeah, too. That's and, gonna hurt. And, and, and yeah, ice isn't soft. Mm-mm. We we didn't get to ask Jeff this one, but I would have liked to to hear if this is true or not. Universal Pictures offered Steve Carlson, Jeff Carlson, and Hanson, David Hanson. Uh, a spinoff film, and it would have been. So uh, these are the three guys that played the Hanson brothers in yeah, the movie. Okay, they they were offering them a spinoff like movie after this hmm. that they would have had. Well, no, there there was a slap shot too, and, that and was a slap shot three. Yes. Yeah, but they wanted a spinoff, which is them, just they, the Hansons, and, and they would have went off and did like their own. You know, that could have been a whole other career, for right? Them. But they wanted to go like, back and play hockey. They didn't want to do any more of the acting. So I wonder if all three said that at the same time, or if there was just one holdout. Maybe like maybe two of them said, dude, come on, let's go do this. We can make a lot more money mm-hmm. and it's, it's a lot less brutal on our lives that, you know, going into this act. And maybe one was like, no man, fuck you guys. Eh? Yeah. I wanna go, I want to go, I want to go play hockey. hockey. Yeah. yeah um, if you are watching this film for the first time, check out the Hanson brothers and the way they, they interact with each other. Like when they're like, yeah, man, it's cool. All right, man, yeah. Yeah. come on, let's get out there. Yeah. Yeah. Let's get them. Like, and they like all kind of talk the same and, and just are very excited, very anxious to get out there and play. Yeah, as we it found was, out, uh, he was from uh, Virginia, Minnesota, and I didn't know there was a Virginia, Minnesota. I had no idea. That's where Jeff Carlson, it was up near the Canadian border, I guess. That's like a geographical anomaly, a state within a state. Mm-hmm. Yeah, mm. but big, big uh, hockey town. Huge. Or area. Tremendous. Whole area, yeah. I think there was like a league out there, like the Iron League or something like the that. The Iron they, League. It's they, mentioned a few times in the movie. In the mm-hmm. movie that they kind of based it on, but. The Federal League, Iron League. Yeah. Super cool hit league. Yeah, but this Justice was a league. I was going to say Justice League. This league of Extraordinary Gentlemen. I was just going to say that one as well. Damn it, man. Um, lots of leagues. A lot of leagues. 10,000 leagues. League of their own. Under Ooh. the sea. Nice. Yeah. yeah. Like that. Like that. Major League. You yeah. said Major League? No, I didn't say Major League. Oh, my God. Yeah. Some 10,000 bananas. Mm. Um, Banana League. Mm-hmm. <laughs> still All right, man. <laughs> no. Uh, <laughs> Keep going. We got to put a cork in this one. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, but that was a this one I hadn't seen like the whole way through. I think I saw it when I was like young, much younger. Uh, I'm I was aware of it, but I never really sat down and watched it. 
this is this would have been the first time that I actually sat down and watched it. I mean, I didn't really follow hockey growing up. I wasn't into hockey that much. I was aware of the movie, but yeah, I can see where it's iconic now that watching it that, you know, if you're in the hockey, even if you're not in hockey, you're just in the comedies. It, it was good. Yeah. It was funny. It's kind of like a yeah, knee slapper type comedy. Mm-hmm. Some good ones. Good I'm just, I'm, I'm very thankful that everything, all the, the, the gears kind of turned into the right direction with juice and with you know, the, our, our interviews that we were able to do this movie. I've been wanting to do this for months. Mm-hmm. I mean months. So I'm really glad we got to do this, man. This is yeah. just my favorite sports movie. Yeah, man. Big shout out to Juice, uh, John Jerio, and Pucks with Pros for painting all this and getting us uh, these interviews and just the opportunity to sit down with Jeff and uh, well, Carrie, and then and then again with Christian via Zoom. Uh, that was really really cool. A lot of these uh, other podcasts don't get those opportunities uh, to sit down with people from movies and mm-hmm. people that are connected. You can get some inside information and hear it right from the person, somebody that was involved. Uh, I think we probably learned uh, quite a few cool things. Oh my gosh, yeah. That was awesome. Just yeah. awesome. So I'm not sure what movie we'll have on tap next week. Um, I have to go back to the poll. I know there's a couple that were... <laughs> Stay off the poll, Dave. Yeah. Mm. I know there's a couple that were tied, or like pretty high up. Um, but yeah, we'll figure it out. Definitely come back with something cool. You guys got anything else in closing? Uh, no. Uh, thank you, Juice and uh, Christian and uh, Jeff. Indeed. Thank you, Juice, Christian, and Jeff. Great movie. Great time. Great interviews. Mm-hmm. Loved it. Awesome. Yeah, so uh, don't forget to find us on Facebook and Instagram at Old Dirty Basement and on TikTok at Old Dirty Basement Podcast. I guess that's it for now, so we'll catch you where? On the flip side. If we don't see you sooner, we'll see you later. Peace. Thanks for listening to The Vintage Cinema Review in the Old Dirty Basement. If you dig our theme music like we do, check out the Tsunami Experiment. Find them on Facebook. Their music is streaming on Spotify and Apple and where great music is available. You can find us at Old Dirty Basement on Facebook and Instagram and at Old Dirty Basement Podcast on TikTok. Peace. We Audi 5000. Peace.